Hi all, Chris here. Today I'm going to do an intermediate Vim tutorial on registers. So here you can see the 10 different register types that are available in Vim. You can see these yourself in the help. If you just do uh, colon H registers, and you'll see them right there with all of their full descriptions. <clears throat> so to save you the uh, trouble of reading through these, we're just going to go through them one at a time and show you what the registers are and kind of what they are good for. So the uh, kind of big picture of what registers do for you is they are uh, kind of like a sequential set of little mini clipboards um, where you can save your deleted or changed text and then reinsert them kind of at your leisure. They also are the place where you uh, can go to find any macros you've saved or anything like that. So the, the first register here is the unnamed register and the unnamed register is the kind of default register where <clears throat> if you change, insert, or overwrite text, you can go find that text later. So for example, if I were to delete this word here, uh, D-A-W, and I wanted to get that back, uh, what I might do is I might do something like uh, quotation mark, quotation mark, paste, and there's that word numbered. <clears throat> so that's where that goes. So your most recent um, deletions or changes all go there, and then uh, subsequent changes are put other places. So that would be uh, this line two here. So there are 10 numbered registers, which are zero to nine. <clears throat> and what happens as you make changes, uh, the first change you make goes into the um, unnamed register. And then the next time you make a change, so for example, let's say that I just deleted this line. Uh, that deleted line is now in the unnamed register. So if I go to the end of the line here, uh, well, let's just make some new space. I do quotation mark, quotation mark, P, you'll see uh, the one that I just deleted. And then if I do, for example, uh, colon O, zero, P, we'll get that word registers, which is the previous um, kind of thing that I deleted or changed. And so if you want to see all of your registers, for example, you can do uh, colon reg, and this will show all of them. So here you see at the top, we have our unnamed register. Then we have uh, 0, 1, 2, and up until number 9. So every time that you um, kind of delete something into a register, or uh, I think even if you yank. So let's just take this whole line and then uh, paste it out. Yes. <clears throat> so even yanking goes in there. So the, the last one pops off, number 9, and then you kind of uh, start from the unnamed and go from 0 to 10 underneath that. Uh, the next register that's here is the small delete register. So this is the register that's used by default in Vim anytime that you have uh, deleted or changed only part of a line. So if I, for example, go to the word register uh, here and I do capital D, uh, we delete to the end of the line. And if I go over here and I go uh, quotation mark and then the minus sign, oh, excuse me, uh, not in um, insert mode, but I do quotation mark minus sign and paste, you will see that's the small amount of stuff that I have just deleted. So uh, I, I don't use, I'll be honest, any of these top three registers, but it's important to know at least that they exist in the case that, for example, if you make multiple changes and then find later that you need some of them, you can go get them. Uh, the main bulk here of what most people are going to use for registers are in the 26 named registers A to Z. Uh, and so this is very clearly marked as 26 names registers of uh, lowercase a to lowercase z. Uh, but you'll see also there's capital A to capital Z, which looks like 52 registers, but it's not. And I will show you why. So if, for example, um, I was going to make a macro. So let's go to a different um, file here. And let's say that I wanted to do something like, uh, I don't know, let, let's take the first word here, uh, foo, and let's change it to bar. So if I do, um, and let's do it with a macro. So let's say, you know, Q and then A. So I'm now recording in the A register, this A macro. I might say something like uh, CIW bar, and then I might do escape and press Q. And so then if I go down to, uh, you know, this line three that has a foo here and I do at A, it's going to change that first word to bar, uh, which is useful because you may do something atomic where, you know, you have some use for macros and, um, you know, you, you 
are starting to use, and then you realize, oh, shoot, you know what? I really wish that instead of just changing this first word, I'd like to change the first word, and then I'd like to add something to the end. So this is a case where you might do, uh, like, Q capital A, which is actually appending the little a register, and say at the end of the line, so I'll do capital A, let's do bang, sure, and then escape and press Q. So now if I undo that, and I go to the start of the line, and I do at A, you see it changes, it does what was in the A register, but it also adds the bang. Uh, and so if you wanted to see at any time what's in that register, of course, you can treat it just like the numbered registers. You can do uh, double quote A and then P, for example, and you'll see everything that's uh, that's in there. So this is the, the full text. This is, you know, change in word uh, bar or change in word and then type the word bar. Uh, and then I did an escape <clears throat> and I added to the end of the line bang and pressed escape again. So you get some interesting uh, codes here that you may or may not be interested in. Uh, I guess we'll talk about that in, in just a second. So that's the kind of use of those registers. And of course, you can uh, change them together. I don't want to um, you know, get too much into to macros in general, but they can be recursive. You can do all kinds of interesting stuff with macros. Uh, so let's see, having covered those, there are these read-only registers as well. So you have, uh, well, let's go here. Let's do... Uh, colon, pers or we'll just do S on this line, we're going to change the word foo to bar, just the first one. And then if I run that, uh, that changes the first uh, instance here. And then if I do at colon, uh, you'll see it gets the second one, and then at colon again, or even if I did at at in this case, which is, you know, run the last macro again, um, we're going to sequentially keep running that. It's just running the last um, colon command again. So that's the, the colon register. The dot register is somewhat more interesting. Uh, so what that does is, let's say that I need to add some text in the front. So let's do, let's put bang at the front of this line. So if I do I, bang, space, and escape, I could come down to the front of this line here and do uh, at period, oops, interesting, at period, nope. Okay, so let's do it like this. Um, it's actually executing what's uh, what's in there. So if I did, for example, um, I bang, and then uh, I press escape and undo that, I could do at dot, and it will insert the word bang, there, which is kind of interesting. And I could just uh, kind of keep keep doing that. Uh, ooh, yeah. Now I've got dots kind of overloading each other. But uh, th the only place that I've ever seen the dot register used is in cases where like you're playing vim golf and you're trying to get a really low score um, but what goes into that register <clears throat> foo bar baz let's say and then i undo that if i go up a line and i do uh double quote period and then paste oh it doesn't actually do it period paste um hmm, interesting paste okay so there we go uh, it does take whatever that last line of text is, and it it uh, it pastes that in. So that that registers a little bit um, esoteric. Uh, I, I'm sure there's some clever way if you were you know writing some kind of recursive macro that needed uh, you know just a, a little bit of fine tuning from whatever you put in in insert mode, you could probably find a use a use for that. Uh, the percent register is the name of the current file, and it's the full path to the current file. So this file is called foo, for example. So if I did something like uh, double quote percent, I'm oh, sorry, double quote percent paste, you're going to get foo, which is the name of the file. If I go back here to the registers buffer, and I come down here and I do double quote percent paste, uh, you'll see you'll get that registers. It will do the, the full path from wherever your home directory is. That's very useful if you're ever needing to get uh, your file name, if you're writing some code or something, and you need to say, you know, I want this particular file, for example. Sorry, slight disconnect there. Um, the the next buffer here is the alternate buffer register, which if you happen to do you know colon ls, you can see what's here. So this is your your alternate buffer. It isn't read only, so it's uh, set out as a separate um, uh, buffer register. So you could, for example, assign that to be something else if you want to say you know make my hmm, uh, pound buffer be you know some other file you can you can do that you can uh, you can read about that more in the, the help but in this particular case it works just like 
uh, that percent buffer. So if I do, you know, uh, double quote pound paste, it's going to give whatever our alternate buffer is. In this case, it's the this foo file over here. This is also the file where if you press uh, control six, um, that's the one that gets uh, picked up there. So that's of interest to know. So let me undo that. <clears throat> and then we'll talk about the next buffer, which I think is really interesting, the expression register equal sign. So the way that you're probably going to use this is, you know, let's say you had some small computation you had to do and you get an insert mode and you say, hmm, I really don't want to do this uh, in my head. I would like Vim to do that. So if you press control R, which is uh, kind of, you know, give whatever is in the contents of, of a particular register. So I do control R and equal sign. You'll see it drops me to the bottom here. It leaves a place uh, holder of double quotes. And then it will execute any Vim script you want to put in here. Um, as long as the answer can be coerced to a string or is a string at the end. So if I did, for example, 2 plus 3 here and press enter, it's going to give me 5. If I come down uh, here, you know, I could combine things we've done so far. So let's say I did like uh, select to the equal sign. So VT equals, and I'm going to say uh, colon A, Y. So I've yanked that in. So now I could do, for example, uh, control R equals, and then I could do control R A and it's going to give me that 5 times 5, press enter, bam, there's the result. Uh, so this is really nice as a scratch pad if you ever have just a little bit of math you need to do or something like that, or you want to call a Vim function to uh, you know, get, get the results out. So the, the next one here, I'm not actually going to talk about very much, the selection and drop registers. So supposing that you've compiled Vim or you have a copy of Vim that has clipboard enabled, uh, you have your kind of unnamed plus register and your unnamed star register, which... Um, if you press like, uh, you know, control C to copy, for example, while you're in, uh, you know, a web document or something, this is where they go. Uh, so Vim knows knows what to, to use. And then the tilde register here is the select register, which means if you were to drag and drop some text into Vim, if you were in insert mode, uh, that's where those go. So the next register, which I also have not found a great use for, is the black hole register here. So if I do, for example, uh, double quote underscore YY, this is going to yank into the uh, the black hole register, which means it basically goes nowhere. It, it gets deleted. So you actually can't paste out of this register. If I do, you know, double quote underscore paste, it's always empty because the black hole just uh, kind of deletes those. That's useful, um, you know, if you're writing a plugin or something like that and you want to do some text manipulation, but you don't want to clutter the user's, um, you know, numbered registers, for example, you might use the unnamed, uh, the un or I'm sorry, the black hole register. And then the uh, the last register here is the pattern register. So if I do, you know, a search, for example, so I do slash pattern. So there it is. If I press enter, you know, uh, that now is part of if I do uh, double quote slash paste. Oh, shoot, I missed uh, double quote slash paste. There's uh, the pattern. So this has some maybe non visible kinds of implications. Um, I don't know exactly how you would use this. I, I gather that if you have highlight search on, you can highlight different kinds of text that you haven't actually typed a search in for. Um, but the way that I would use this, or the way that uh, I think is kind of most intuitive, is if you have a line, you know, like we, we did here, we said, um, you know, colon S, and we say foo, and we say let's go to bar, and then I do that replacement. <clears throat> if I wanted to do that again, of course, I could do, you know, at colon, and it would do that. But maybe I want to do something slightly different. So, for example, I could do colon slash slash, which is going to pull out of the uh, that register, that, that um, search register. And I could say, change that to be, um, you know, instead of bar, let's do bang. Sure. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I actually have to type uh, something. So let's... Let's search again for uh, that. Well, let's do that replacement again. Uh, colon S bar, and we'll do baz, and then I can do <coughs> colon S uh, foo bar. There we are. So what I could do then is uh, colon S slash slash, and I could do bang, for example, and it'll find the next instance of foo and replace it with bang. So that's that's the case where I would I would use this. Um, just that if you've done a search in some way, you know, if I searched for baz. You know, I could come up here and I could say, well, where does Baz appear? Okay, it doesn't, but, you know, Foo does. 
So if who's right there, I could say, hey, let's do s slash slash bar, uh, something like that. I don't know. But it saves you just a little bit of typing. So if you're doing some complicated regex or something like that, you can uh, you can go sort it out. And uh, I think that's actually going to round us out. That's the full set of registers. Uh, I think a, a video on macros is probably forthcoming and necessary. Um, mostly you can live here. You'll live most of your life in uh, in the A to Z registers. But just do know that if you do you know colon reg, you can see um, all of your registers just in some, but in uh, kind of more particular, if you want to look at the unnamed register or zero through nine, these are the ones that you get without having to yank or delete or uh, you know change into those registers. You get those for free. So if sometime you've written some text, deleted something, and you actually find that you want it later, you can go back and and uh, get it. So the only other thing that I will remind everyone is <clears throat> this Control R is important. If I do Control R, uh, you know, and then I do double quote for example. This is going to give whatever was in the the um, the register that you named. So Control R A is going to give you uh, whatever was in that register. It's just going to literally type out of that. So that's something that's that's useful to know uh, whether you're using macros or or other registers in general. It just saves you from uh, you know having to to retype things if you want to use them as as variables. So thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you next time.